Hello from the French Riviera. The films at Cannes like to make you think. They can shock you, and occasionally you'll watch something that will stay with you forever. One such work is Son of Saul, from the Hungarian director Laszlo Nemes. His debut takes place in a hell within hell, where prisoners in Auschwitz are forced to dispose of the dead. It's basically the story of a man who uh, who works in a in a crematorium. He's a prisoner in a in a an extermination camp. He's supposed to burn the bodies of his own people. Uh, the story takes place in 1944 in Auschwitz, and um, and and one day he finds. Uh, uh, the body of a boy, and he's supposed to burn it, but he, he wants to bury it. He thinks it, it's, this boy is his son, and it's his quest of burying this, this body. It's your first film. It is. You're the only director in competition who hasn't made a film before. You've chosen one of the most difficult subjects um, to put on screen. Why a Holocaust? The subjects found me, apart from the fact that I have some parts of my family were killed in 44. I found 10 years ago writings by the members of the Zonderkommando, the group of crematorium workers in Auschwitz and uh, they describe their daily life and actually they put it into the ground, the writings, because they knew they, they would be killed soon. Actually they rebelled in October 44, most of them were, were killed. How do you feel about the way the Holocaust has been depicted in cinema up until now? Very frustrating. I think uh, apart from documentaries, the fiction films have been telling the story of survival. And the, the history of the camps is, is, was not about survival. The history of the camps were about uh, death. And I didn't want to make, uh, in this sense, a story about the exception. But at the same time, the story of this man is an exception, if you will, because the story is a is, is, is about you know, the inner voice in the, in when there's no more hope. Since um, 1985 and Claude Landsman's film Shoah, there has been debate about how and if the Nazi um, death camp should be depicted on screen. You've made an outstanding film. There's been a lot of admiration, but there still will be people who will say the unimaginable should be left unimaginable. I think the unimaginable should be imagined because then the audiences will, would have more empathy towards what happened. I think we should find ways of telling, telling us the story to our generations. The trick is not to, not to show the, it frontally, but rather make it, you know, suggest it. So the imagination of the viewer will construct something we wanted to present the vision of one man and, and stay with this man and not uh, you know, show too much and uh, tell too much. Uh, so we restrained uh, the possibility of, uh, of viewing and, and relying more on the imagination of the viewer to reconstruct what's going on in, the, in this madness. There's unrelenting focus on Saul. Yes. His head always seems to be the center um, of the screen, pretty much all the way through the film. And as you said, like the action is blurred in the background. We see violence. Yes. Uh, we see nudity, but we don't really see it. Yes. But we do hear a lot. Yes. Tell me about that choice. 
the sound is there to suggest that there is more. It's always a reference uh, suggesting that uh, you cannot encompass it entirely. Our main character doesn't pay attention to the horror as he's used to it. It's sad, but he, is, he was switched off in a way, like the Zondar Commando workers were. But what he pays attention to is uh, his own quest. Saul has only one goal, not to escape or to survive, but to give the young boy a proper Jewish burial. But God could scarcely seem more absent from this scene. Explain his motivation. He wants to do something that doesn't make sense to anybody. But I think it does make sense to the, to the viewer. Uh, because it's something about inner survival, beyond hope. What's that there? Shaul. There's another first time director here whose um, film is looking at the birth of Israel after the Holocaust, and Natalie Portman's film is called um, A Tale of Love and Darkness. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took her years to get funding. What mm -hmm. was the reaction like when you said you were going to make a film about the Holocaust? We had great difficulties of funding the film in Europe. Only the Hungarian Film Fund went, you know, agreed to finance it. Uh, people were scared by the subject and, um, and they thought it, it would be problematic to make it because I'm, it, it's only a first film. You're here at the biggest film festival in the world. Everyone is praising your film. More or less. <laughs> How does it feel to you to be here? What's your Cannes experience like? Uh, when we walked up this, the, you know, the red carpet, the, when they presented the film, there was a sort of communion in the, in the crew and with the actors and, um, and uh, the viewers. And it was very touching. That's what interests me is that people can see this film and talk about it, and maybe it will get sold to countries that, uh, and people from other other countries will see this film. And that's that's the most important thing. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely thank to you, meet you. Thank you very much. Good to meet you.